Hi, my name is Anthony Dessa. Today we are going to talk about aspect-oriented programming and especially we are going to see how we can use Unity to address cross-cutting concerns like logging. Following information should be logged for every method in your class. When execution enters into your method, it should be logged. If there are any parameters that are passed to the methods, all the parameters should be logged as a name value pair. Total time for executing the method should be logged. If the method returns any parameter, the value of the parameter should be logged. While exiting the try block, it should logged. If while exiting the final block, it should log. If there is an exception, then exception details should be logged as well. In our first example, we are going to implement logging without using Unity. Let's suppose we have a class called calculator and there is one method called add for which we wanted to implement logging. Add method takes in two parameters and returns the result as an integer. The very first line that we are going to log is that the method has begun execution into the try block. The next thing that we will log is the name and the value of each parameter that is passed to the method. Then we will start the stopwatch, do our, perform our calculations, and then we will stop the stopwatch. We will record the total time that has elapsed during the execution. Then we will log the result. Before leaving the try block, we will log arc that the try block is about to exit. If there are any exceptions, then we will log the exceptions and then we will log that we are exiting the final block. Following is the result of executing the add method. Following are the issues that are associated with this approach. It violates try principle. That is, don't repeat yourself. If there are four different methods in the same class, you will have to implement logging in all four methods. It's very time consuming. It's very inconsistent. It's very difficult to enforce as well. It's very difficult to read business rules. When a developer is working on any method, they should not be concerned about the logging details. 100% of the focus should be on implementing the business rules. Following method, you could see they are very clean and easy to understand. There is no logging details in it. Yet, when these methods are executed, it will generate the same logging output as were generated in the previous examples. In our next example, we are going to implement logging by using Unity object interception in Unity. The interception subsystem is made up of three key elements, the interceptor or proxy, the behavior pipeline, and the behavior or aspect. At the two extreme end of the subsystem, you will find the client application and the target. Once the client application is configured to use interception API, any method invocation goes through a proxy object the interceptor. The proxy objects looks at the list of registered behavior and invokes them through the internal pipeline. Each configured behavior is given a chance to run before or after the regular invocation of the object method. What this means is that the client application, once it is registered, all the calls from the client application will be intercepted by the interceptor. The interceptor will then examine the interception pipeline and find out what are the behaviors that are registered. Then it will pass on the input parameters to the behavior and execute each behavior that is registered one by one. Then it will invoke the target object, passing in the parameters that were passed by the client. The target object will be executed and it will return. Once it is returned, then it will be returned to the behavior. The behavior will get a chance to execute once again and, the fi and finally the interceptor will receive the call and return the value to the client application. There are four steps to implementing logging behavior in Unity. Step one is to define the interface. In our case, we are going to define an interface called iCalculator. Step two is to define a concrete class that implements the interface we are going to define a concrete class called calculator which implements the interface iCalculator. Step 3 is to define a class that implements the logging behavior and the last step is to glue the first three steps together. We can either use a configuration file or we can use fluid syntax. In our case we have defined an interface called iCalculator. It has three four methods add, subtract, multiply and divide. Then we define a class, concrete class called calculator, which implements iCalculator. All four methods 
are implemented over here add subtract multiply and divide and step three is to define a logging behavior class logging behavior class implements i interception behavior it has three methods get required interface invoke and will execute we'll go through each one of them separately i interception behavior has a property called will execute. This property is an optimization hint to the interceptor. If you return true through this property, the interceptor will execute the behavior. There may be a scenario where you check certain configuration and decide that you don't want your behavior to be executed. In that case, you simply return false. I interception behavior has a method called invoke. This method takes in two parameters of type i method invocation and get next interception behavior delegate and it returns one parameter of type i method return. i method invocation allows you to get access to the actual parameters that were passed by the client get next interception behavior delegate is a pointer to the next behavior in the chain it allows you to execute the next behavior and pass the input parameter to it. I'm using reflection to get to the name of the method being executed and the name of the interface. I've defined a private method called get parameter info. This method loops through all the input parameter that are passed through it and returns a concatenated string of name value pair. Then I'm logging the total execution time for the method. Next I'm logging the return parameter the remaining of the logging is the same as it was in the add method. The last step is to register the client for interception behavior. The registration could be done either through by using the fluent syntax or it can be done through configuration file. In our example, we are going to use the configuration file. The first step is to define an alias and map the alias to the type. We'll first map interface I calculator to the type. Then we'll map the concrete class that implements the I calculator, that is the calculator class. And the last class for which we will define the alias will be the logging behavior. We also have to map the interface to the concrete class. There could be multiple concrete class that could be implementing the same interface. In our case, we have only defined one concrete class that is the calculator that implements the I calculator. And the very last step is to define the interception. In our case, the logging behavior is the interception, which will intercept all the calls that are made on the interface I calculator. Let's see everything in action. Just to recap, first what we did was we defined an interface called I calculator. Then we created a concrete implementation that is the calculator, which implements the I calculator interface. Then we define the behavior and at the end we glue all of them together by using the configuration file. In the main program we will first create an instance of an object unity container. Then we will load the configuration section. Once the configuration section is loaded then we will ask the unity to resolve the interface I calculator. Since in the configuration, we have mapped I calculator to the concrete class calculator. An instance of a class calculator will be created. Then we will call the method add, subtract, divide, and multiply. Let's run it and see what the result is. As you could see, in the main class, we never implemented any logging behavior, and yet we see all the logging. Logging of parameter is not just restricted to primitive type. We can log parameter of complex type as well. Let's look at an example. Let's start this example by creating some complex data type. I've created three complex data type, customer, a customer order, and the customer order detail. I have also created an interface called iOrder. There is only one method defined into this. It's called get customer order. It takes input parameter as a complex type called customer and it returns a complex type called cust order. Cust order is all the orders associated with a given customer. I have defined another class called order, which is the concrete implementation of I order. It implements the class called get customer order. In this class, I am just creating a dummy data. In logging behavior class, I have made modification to get input parameter info. I have also defined another private method called get return parameter 
info. I'm using get parameter info dot name to get the name of the parameter. The static method just serializes whatever object is passed to it. I have defined another method called get return parameter info. This method is to serialize the return parameter. I have made some modification to the app dot config as well. I have defined two additional aliases i order of type aop dot i order and then another alias order of type aop dot order. I have mapped i order to its concrete type order. I have defined an interception behavior. The behavior type is the same which is logging behavior. I have resolved i order interface its concrete implementation order. I have created a customer object and and fill it up with dummy data. I am calling a method get customer order on a concrete class order. It returns the customer order. Let's run this application and see the behavior. As you could see the primitive type are still being logged and the complex type is now also supported. Summary. It is recommended to use Unity to address cross-cutting concerns like logging, caching, and security. Once client application has been configured for interception, then all the calls to the interface will be intercepted by the interceptor or proxy. Interceptor will call all registered behavior, that is logging in our case. To implement logging, you will have to do following. Create an interface, create a concrete class that implements the interface, Create a logging behavior class. Configure the client either by fluid syntax or by configuration file. Thank you so much for attending the course.